It's time for Peer Governor Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Peer Governor Baseball is brought to you by Bank West, Beck Motors, Avera, Todd Pharmacy, Stalkin Peterson, Waltai and Jones LLP, Graham Tire, and Kruger Contracting. One, that one out to left field, that's down for a base hit. Peer will take the lead. Rounding third, trying to score is Kaiser. He will slide in safely. A two out, two RBI single for his able in the seventh. And Pierce takes a 4 2 lead. And by American Family Insurance, Brittany Sheppelbein Agency, Ye Gare, May Adam, Wagner Auto, Comtech, Gales Gas, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Ferding Electric, Agtegra and AGE Corporation. 3-2 pitch. Stally, fly ball to left field. That should be deep enough to win the ball game. Kaiser will tag up from third. The catch is made. The throw coming to the plate. Ten in a row for the Governors. They score three in the seventh inning. Stally with a walk-off sack fly. Pier Governor Baseball is also brought to you in part by Capital City Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota. True Green, Chemlon. Nystrom Electric. Fisher Round. Faith Lutheran Church, Graham Tire, and CHS River Plains. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fly ball to left field. Merquan going back on it. Still going back. He's up underneath it. And for the first time in history, the Pier Governors win the Class A State Baseball Championship. A dog pile ensues near first base. And by Lamb Motors, First Dakota National Bank, Edward Jones Financial, South Dakota Office of the Attorney General, Division of Consumer Protection. Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping. Now, let's head to the booth with the call of the game with the voice of the governors, KCCR Sports Director, John Winkler. And from Aspen Park, we welcome you as the Pier Governors take on the Brandon Valley Lynx in a double hunter. Beautiful night for some baseball. Looking forward to two good games here in uh, Brandon as the Govs and the Brandon Valley Lynx get set for first pitch coming up as the Govs are looking to get the six and maybe seven and two by the end of the night. Brandon Valley at 500 right now. Uh, they do have a tie on their record, but we'll talk about that later on as we get into this ball game. They're coming in at seven and seven, but more importantly, three and one in South Dakota games as they've played their four South Dakota to games all this week as they uh, split with O'Gorman on Tuesday and then it ended up being a, a doubleheader sweep of Yankton uh, on Thursday yesterday. So the, the pitching is starting to get a little bit thin, but it is going to be Eric Roberts that is starting for the Brandon Valley Lynx as he has had himself a, uh, has had four different starts so far of the season of the 15 games they've played. So not a, a guy that you would say is, Trying to, to dig down deep and at the bottom of your pitching staff it is not like that at all. Eric Roberts is a, a good pitcher. We'll talk about his stats and his four outings so far in the season here in just a little bit. But the Governors are looking for their sixth win. They will have Ridge Leinbach on the mound uh, as he is. He had a very fantastic outing last Friday night against the Lincoln Patriots, uh, giving up just two unearned runs in the 3-2 win for the Governors. So he is going to be the starter. He's looking for his um, will be his would be be a second win uh, in the last two Fridays, and the Govs are looking for their sixth win overall, taking on the Brandon Valley Lynx here from Aspen Park in Brandon. We'll step aside here when we come back in uh, for the pregame show. We'll have starting lineups and the pitching matchup coming up. We, I know we kind of already mentioned it, but we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Back in three minutes, you're listening to Pure Governor Baseball on KCCR. You're watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. ComTech, your local technology solutions provider, is now located on the truck bypass. With great brands like Bose, Sonos, LG, Samsung, Lenovo, and so much more. Stop in to see their new showroom for everything in stock for your personal or business needs. ComTech provides professional installation and service after the sale. ComTech is your local technology store located now on the truck bypass. Or visit us on the web at ComTechPlus.com. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. 
convenient, connected, committed. Member FDIC. Nystrom Electrical Contracting in Pier has been providing professional sales, service, and installation since 1977. Whether you're starting from scratch, new construction, or you're upgrading your current system at your home, farm, or office, give the professionals at Nystrom Electrical Contracting a call. They've got a lot of bright ideas. Call Nystrom's today to schedule a free computer-generated estimate. The number is 224-8750, or visit their website at nystromelectric.com. Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping wants to make it easy for you to get that lush green lawn and that yard haven that you've been dreaming of. Visit dakotasprinkler.com to make appointments for sprinkler system spring startup, service calls, fall winterization, and landscaping quotes. Trust Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping's professionals to get you through the planning and installation to make your landscaping needs a reality. Visit dakotasprinkler.com today. With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back, the sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, yes, signed its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebite Agency, LLC. 224-6627. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, lammotor.com. As we welcome you back, there we go. As we welcome you back here, we're getting set for first pitch between the uh, Pier Governors and the Brandon Valley Lynx. John Winkler here on this uh, Friday evening, getting close to Friday evening. Let's go through the starting lineups and uh, our starting uh, uh, pitchers as well. We'll start things here with the Pier Governors. George Stalley will lead things off. He's the center fielder. Charlie Simpson will DH and bat second. Jed Zabel, the right fielder, will bat third. Ridge Leinbach is in the lineup. as He's batting fourth and uh, is pitching. Nolan Peterson, the catcher, batting fifth. Miles Doyle, the second baseman, is batting sixth. Matthew Brewer, the first baseman, will bat seventh. Spencer Eads on the left fielder, batting eighth. And Dawson Getz, the shortstop, batting ninth. I mentioned about Ridge Leinbach being the lineup. If it's Legion Baseball, and you have a DH, Ridge Leinbach would not be in the lineup, but you can DH for anybody in high school baseball. So Carter Shuffelbein will be the third baseman, but it will be um, doing the DH in duties is Charlie Simpson. So Shuffelbein will play third, but Simpson is going to DH in his spot. For Brandon Valley, it'll be Chase Leary, the right fielder, that will lead things off. Aiden Zur, the shortstop, will bat second. Nolan Pudwell, the center fielder, batting third. Jackson Adams, the catcher, will bat fourth. Max Peters will play first and bat fifth. Ryland Carroll, the third baseman, batting sixth. Braden Stroh, the DH, will bat seventh. The Braden Knutson, the second baseman, batting eighth. And Charles Finn, the left fielder, will bat ninth for Brandon Valley. Eric Roberts, again, is on the mound for the Brandon Valley Lynx here in game one of our double hutter. So, again, it is going to be Staley, Simpson, Zabel, Leinbach, Peterson, Doyle, Brewer, Eslin, Getz, and the nine hitters for Pierre. Leary, Zur, Pudwell, Adams, Peters, Carroll, Stroh, Knutson, and Finn for the Brandon Valley Lynx. We'll take one more break here in the pregame show. When we come back, we've got uh, first pitch coming up for you back in three minutes here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Tons Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Tons Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Tons Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Tons Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your Pier Area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! 
For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your Pure Area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, hey you, are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS as an equal opportunity employer. Wagner Auto Company is your complete transportation headquarters. Now is the time to order your new Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Plus, a good selection of quality pre-owned and certified pre-owned vehicles. They'll take care of you after the sale with a full-service parts and auto body shop with trained technicians, along with a friendly financing team that'll work with you to find the best deal and one that'll fit your budget. Wagner Auto is your local, full-service, family-owned dealership for over 115 years. WagnerAuto.com. That's WagnerAuto.com. Yag Air Incorporated is your locally owned ag chemical and seed retailer. Yag Air Incorporated offers reliable ground and aerial application. For the latest seed and chemical pricing, contact Kyle at 605-280-8710 or Tony at 605-280-4771. Yag Air for all your ag chemical and seed needs. Kyle. 605-280-8710 or Tony 605-280-4771 There's only a split second to decide if the pitch is good or not. With skill, some luck, and a prayer, the bat connects. The ball goes soaring over the fence. The sense of joy and excitement is contagious as we cheer for another pure home run. This is Pastor Sam of Faith Lutheran Church. I want to invite you to join us to experience the joy of worshiping God. We thank him for the home run moments we have in our lives. We hear his comfort and peace when it feels like we've struck out. We're glad to see you at Faith Lutheran Church. And we welcome you back here to Aspen Park as we are sent for first pitch between the Pier Governors and the Brandon Valley Lynx here on here on this Friday night. And glad you're with us. Beautiful night for baseball. We'll get you uh, the weather here in just a moment to how nice this is for a double header at least to start the night and should be good a weekend in total here for the pier governors as they will take on the jefferson cavaliers as well tomorrow from the sanford sports complex that'll be a noon first pitch eric roberts the lefty is on the mound for the brandon valley Lynx. this will be his fifth start of the season he's one and two so far and that one win he threw three no hit innings against the against lennox he's actually in two of his Two starts where he either got a win or no decision. He's allowed just one hit in six innings of work uh, and just one walk and had 12 strikeouts between those two against Lennox and O'Gorman. Uh, the other two times he was on the hill uh, was against the late East Hawks and West Fargo where he ended up getting the loss but didn't get a whole lot of defensive help as he gave up a total of six unearned runs of the 14 that he had given up. So a crafty lefty, a good lefty on the mound for... Brandon Valley, as we're just about set here for first pitch. And again, that starting lineup for the Pier Governors, George Stalley is leading things off. He's the center fielder. Charlie, Charlie Simpson, the DH, will bat second. Jet Zabel, the right fielder, batting third. Ridge Linebach, the pitcher, batting fourth. Nolan Peterson will catch and bat fifth. Miles Doyle, the second baseman, batting sixth. Matthew Brewer will bat seventh and play first base. Spencer Eason, on the left fielder, batting eighth. And Dawson gets the shortstop, batting ninth here for the Governors. Tossed out a second, so we are set and ready to go here from Aspen Park here in Brandon. George Stalley will lead things off. 408 batting average on the season. Four doubles of his nine hits, five runs driven in, and out of the leadoff spot. And that's a pretty good spot to be at if you're going to lead off and have 408 with five runs driven in. Here's the first pitch, and he will swing and sky this out towards right field. Moving back is Leary, the right fielder. He'll make the catch, and there is one pitch and one out to open up the ball game. And let's go around the horn defensively as it will be Charles Finn in left, Nolan Pudwell out in center, as well as also going to be Leary, who just made that catch out in right field. Ryland Carroll, the third baseman, Aiden Zur at short. The first pitch is upstairs for ball one. By the way, first pitch was at 459 here. Make that 4.58 to start this ball game. 
Braden Knuse is the second baseman. Max Peters at first. Jake, uh, Jackson Adams behind the plate. And that one's right down the middle for a strike. And the count's now one and one here to Charlie Simpson. And again, the pitcher is Eric Roberts for Brandon Valley. The lefty gets set and delivers the 1-1 pitch. There's a swing and a miss. And the count's now one and two here to uh, Charlie Simpson. And for Simpson, 333 batting average, two for six so far in the season. Four runs driven in. Here's the one-two pitch. There's a line shot to the sh second baseman, and the second baseman in Canusa will make the catch. Two down, both guys go the other way, but both fielders make the play. And there's two down early on here at the top of the first, and it'll bring up the lefty and the right fielder, Jed Zabel. Zabel, 300 batting average so far. Two doubles, a triple, six runs driven in. As he waits on the first pitch. That'll be taken on the inside corner for a strike. Lefty on lefty matchup. Don't see that very often for Zabel. Doesn't see a whole lot of left-handed pitchers. Obviously, the whole lineup doesn't, but the lefty-lefty matchups are one that favor pitchers. Usually that lefty-righty matchup that right-handed hitters love to have. But counts one and one here to Zabel. One-one pitch. That'll catch the outside edge, and the count's now one and two. This is game number five of the week for Brandon Valley. A doubleheader Tuesday, doubleheader last night. That was down in Yankton. Played O'Gorman on Tuesday. Roberts delivers the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. The bat goes flying, and that's a strikeout for Roberts. It's a one-two-three top of the first. Quickly retired in order of the Pier Governors. We will step aside for a minute, come back with the bottom of the first. You're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through the extreme seasons we've grown to love. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. Their ASC certified mechanics can make your AC cool again, or even just change your oil. They can look into and fix those noises that seem to come from nowhere and have you stressed out. Bring your car to Graham Tire so they can put your mind at ease. Graham Tire, your tire store next door. Ah, uh, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Whoa, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Bottom of the first, no score on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Schuffelbein scoreboard as the governors are on the field. And it is Ridge Leinbach that is on the mound, and he will deal with the Brandon Valley batting order that follows. Chase Leary, the right fielder, will lead things off. Aiden Zer, the shortstop, batting second. Nolan Pudwell, the center fielder, will bat third. Jackson Adams, the catcher, batting fourth. Max Peters, the first baseman, batting fifth. Ryland Carroll, the third baseman, will bat sixth. Braden Stroh, the DH, batting seventh. Brandon Knutson, the second baseman, batting eighth, and Charles Finn, the left fielder, will bat ninth for the Brennan Valley Lynx. Ridge Leinbach, this will be his third appearance, third start. He is 2-0 on the season. He has given up just five hits, two runs, both of them unearned runs. He has also got five walks, 18 strikeouts, an ERA of zero, whip of 1.11, and a batting average against at 156. And for Ridge Leinbach, that's a fantastic start to the season as Chase Leary will dig in and await the first pitch from the right-hander. That'll be on the outside edge, taking for a strike as we're underway here in the bottom of the first inning. Our listen to KCCRP, a Riverfront Broadcasting Station. Emma Thielen is back at the station. John Winkler here just underway in the, our doubleheader tonight between Brandon Valley and the Pier Governors. Here in Brandon, 1-1 one, one is the count to Chase Leary, the leadoff man. For Chase Leary, 250 batting average this week and against all South Dakota Class A opponents, these four games where they're three and one as he cuts on and misses the 1-1 one, one pitch. So Leinbach looking for an early strikeout. 
He'll wind and deal, one-two pitch, swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Leimbach to open up the bottom of the first inning. And it will bring up Aiden Zur, the shortstop. Team hitting 280 coming into today from this week, and again, from the four games that have been played so far. And home plate umpire talking to Ridge Leimbach about something that was not sure what, what the conversation was, but it is Zur now that will come to the plate. As they'll wait on the first delivery from Leimbach. That'll be taken for a strike, and this counts 0-1. Aiden Zur so far, 400 batting average this week, four for 10 with four singles, four runs driven in. They split their two games against O'Gorman and swept the Yankton Bucks in Yankton last night. That'll get to the backstop, and the count's now one and one. Again, Leimbach last time out was last Friday when he was able to get five innings of allowing just two unearned runs. J.J. Buckles came in and closed the door. As there's a ground ball to the left side, fielded by Schuffelbein at third. The throw to first is in time, and there's two down here in the bottom of the first inning. We go around the horn defensively. It is Spencer Eastland in left, George Stalley in center, and Jed Zabel in right. Carter Schuffelbein, who just made that play, playing third base. Dawson gets it short. Miles Doyle at second, Matthew Brewer at first, Nolan Peterson behind the plates. And Leinbach will work against Nolan Pudwell, the center fielder, number three hitter. First pitch is in there for strike one, and all three hitters to start this game for Leinbach. He's got ahead 0-1-1. And batting average against for Leinbach, sub 200 through his first two starts, allowing just five hits in total and nine innings of work. 156 batting average. 0-2 pitch. Taken for strike three on the outside corner. And it's a three up, three down inning for Ridge Leinbach as he gets two strikeouts to bookend the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. One completes here at Aspen Park. No score between Pier and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. So both pitchers were flawless in that first inning as it is a no score on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shufflebein scoreboard. Four, five, and six will be due up for both the second uh, inning for both these teams. Ridge Leinbach, Nolan Peterson, and Miles Doyle, the first three hitters for the Governors. Anybody reaches base, then we'll go to Matthew Brewer as Leinbach will come to the plate. 316 batting average so far in the season. Four runs driven in. A OPS at 718 for Leinbach, who can help himself out and be the game's first base runner to open up the top of the second. First pitch from the lefty Roberts. That'll be taken for a strike. And the count is 0 and 1. Here's the 0 1 pitch from Roberts. That one's. Into center field, that's going to get through for a base hit, and Leimach is going to be the first base runner here for the Pier Governors. Lead off single, gets the Govs in business. And there's one on and nobody out here in the top of the second. We get a courtesy runner, Cade Kaiser will come out and run for Ridge Leimbach as Nolan Peterson will come to the plate. Peterson, 450 batting average, leading the team with at least 10 at-bats. 
with a double, nine hits in total, four runs driven in. Hitting in that number five spot, perfect spot to get guys on base and for him to try and drive guys in as the first pitch is taken for a strike to Nolan Peterson. Guy that's taking advantage of the chances that he that he's getting it, at least early on in the year, but took advantage of the opportunities he got last summer. This will be fouled on the, actually popped over the right side and getting into foul territory and it will land foul. The way the sun is at right now as it counts 0-2, it is a little bit hard to see where the ball's going off the bat from up here. Well, the count is 0-2 here to Peterson. Negan Huska, who caught last spring, played almost every single inning. So Peterson didn't really get that chance behind the plate, but then once he got going in the summer, he was he, he wasn't really slow to get going, but he he really picked up as the year went on and got to, towards the end of the year, and, and he was one of the post-state best hitters, and he has started out here as one of the best pure governor's hitters in this early part of the spring. One-two pitch. He'll swing and miss at that one. Strike three, back pick to first, and diving back in safely without a tag is Kaiser. But the second strikeout now for Eric Roberts, and then we'll bring up Miles Doyle. Playing second base here in game number one. Doyle so far, 286 batting average, does have a double. Of his two hits, two runs driven in. Pickoff move to first and back in again without a tag applied is Kaiser over at first base. Top of the second, one on and one out. And a scoreless game between Pierre and Brandon. First pitch to Doyle. He'll foul that one straight back to the netting in the council 1-1. One, one. Governor's coming in at 5-2 and two on the season. 7-7 seven and seven for Brandon Valley. They, did have, they do have a tie when they were playing a North Dakota team when they had played, I believe they even played, went into extra innings and decided maybe part of the rules that they were in that uh, the game would just end in a tie. But they, they tied Fargo North Friday, April 5th. They played nine innings. As the runner takes off, the throw will come to second. The tag will be applied in time. And the throw from Adams to Knutson is able to get Kaiser stealing and there's now two down. Quickly here in the top of the second, there's nobody on base and the counts one and one to Miles Doyle. So after a nine inning game, they decided let's, whether that was part of the rules or not, don't need to use any more pitching than you already had and it wasn't going to hurt or help with a win or a loss for either one of those teams. So ends up being a tie in the, in the record book. There's a swing and a foul tip of the mitt. Strike two and the counts two and two. And Eric Roberts trying to get a little unconventional one, two, three inning with the first hit allowed, first base runner, but there's nobody on in two outs now here at the top of the second. Two, two pitch. They'll be taken high and outside, just a hair high and outside. And the count's now three and two. Matthew Brewer is on deck. The lefty Roberts delivers the payoff pitch. It'll miss outside for ball four. And there's one on and two outs now here in the top of the second. And it brings up Matthew Brewer. Brewer did not play on Tuesday. Instead, he got first place in the shot put throw and up in Oneida at the Sully Buttes Early Bird track and field meet with the track team in Rapid City today. And Brewer having a chance to play four games over this weekend. He is out here playing baseball with a doubleheader today and tomorrow for the Governors. 1-0 pitch to Brewer. Swing and a foul back, and the count's 1-1. One one. Trying to get something rolling here with a two outs to the top of the second. Flags out in center field. Pretty much blown from right to left, maybe a little bit towards left field. That pitch will miss low, and the count's now 2-1. and one. Didn't get you the full game time temperature, but it is 62 degrees. We reached the high for the day. Looking by the time that we're done, maybe to get down into the 40s, but just barely. 
as that one's at the knees and the counts now two and two looking for a really nice day tomorrow for a double hunter that starts at noon they count two and two roberts to brewer that one's a line shot in the left field and is down for a base hit and it's first and second now with two away and the inning continues here for the number eight hitter in spencer easland And for Spencer Eason looking at a 235 batting average right now, he's got three runs driven in, a chance for at least a fourth one here. Base in would score Doyle but somewhere in the gap. Maybe he gets a chance to, to put Brewer on his horse and try and score from first. Roberts will step off. First time that anybody has gotten to second base, and that will draw Jackson Adams to go talk to his starting pitcher, make sure they're on the right page with signs and what which sign they're going to use. Don't need to be crossed up, don't need to be giving away their signs for Doyle to peer in and allow Easland to have a chance to, to sit on a fastball or a breaking ball, whatever it might be. So they, they get on the page, same page, and Roberts will step back on the rubber. They'll get the sign and come set. First pitch to Easland. Inside edge, taking first strike, the count's 0-1. Last year, last summer, Eastland in his final at bats here in Brandon hit a three-run homer for Post State that helped them get one last win on the season before and, and move them up in the standings. Actually forced Brandon Valley to be on the road in their best of three series. That one will miss low, and the count's now one and one. Both these teams in the summer missed the state tournament after the spring of both those teams being in the state semifinals. Governors and Brandon Valley Lynx played in the state semifinal last year. Here's the 1-1 to Easland. He'll swing and miss. And the back foot moving before he took the, the swing. The count's now one and two. And again, Roberts a pitch away from working out of now a small jam here in the top of the second. The runners at first and second and two, and two away. Here's the 1-2. Swing and a miss, and Eason will strike out. Two strikeouts to the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. After an inning and a half, there is no score between Peer and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you're listening to Peer Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Peer is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gales Gas at 224-5518. That's Gales Gas at 224-5518. wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. As we walk you back, it is uh, no score on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Shuffle by scoreboard. As it will be 4, 5, and 6 here for Brandon Valley. Jackson Adams, Max Peters, and Ryland Carroll. Both pitchers went 1, 2, 3 in the first inning. A little bit of uh, some danger for Eric Roberts to work around in the second. And let's see what Ridge Leinbach can do here in the bottom of the second as he will deal with the Jackson Adams, Max Peters, and Ryland Carroll in the heart of the order for the Brandon Valley Lynx. In beautiful night. This is the, the best weather for baseball that we've had to start this season, and uh, it's only going to get better for tomorrow. And right now, the early forecast for next Friday hmm, won't be horrible weather. And by horrible weather, meaning that it's not going right now, not calling for any uh, precipitation, but looking ahead to next Friday, looking like it's going to be a high in the high 40s. And getting the lows in the high 20s. First pitch, trying to check his swing. Did he check? He did not check his swing. And it is a strike to Jackson Adams. Jackson Adams coming in at 
22 batting average this week. There's a ground ball left side. Dawson Getz will take the high hop. From short, his throw to first is in time. And the leadoff man retired here to open up the bottom of the four, uh, second inning. 6-3 on the put outs. And it brings up Max Peters. Peters is having himself a pretty good week right now. Six for nine this week. Four runs driven in, six runs scored for Peters as the lefty will take ball one. And this Brandon Valley team has struck out quite a bit in four games, 30 strikeouts in these four games this week. That pitch will be maybe just a tad low, maybe a little bit inside. Either way, the count's 2-0. and oh. Here to Max Peters. Does have a double so far in the four South Dakota games. That one's fouled away. Be fouled into field number C, field letter C, not number C. Which in the summertime, this place is, especially on a Friday night, would be bouncing with a lot of games. There's a swing and a miss, and the count's now two and two. I don't know if, if there's ever been a time in the summer that we've been out here where there hasn't been games being played on a Friday or Saturday. There's a swing and a miss and a strikeout of uh, Peters. Third strike of the ball game now for Ridge Leinbach, and there's two down. And it brings up the third baseman, Ryland Carroll. That wind is really starting to, to blow in now. It was going from right field to left field, or even from the first base dugout out in the left field. Now those flags are more pointed in. While the wind isn't very strong compared to what we have had in other games. That first pitch is over for a strike to Ryland Carroll. Obviously last Saturday being one of those very windy games, but it is blowing in from center field now. That one is flown out towards right field. That one will fall foul and bounce into the right field bullpen. And the count's 0-2 and, and Leinbach now a strike away from making it a quick second inning. Three strikeouts and two ground outs so far from Ridge Leinbach. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Taken for strike three at the top of the zone through a fastball that was not ready for Ryland Carroll on that pitch. He will take it for strike three and that will retire the side in order again here in the second. Six up and six down for Ridge Leinbach through two innings. No score between Pier and Brandon Valley through two. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. And by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds and Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fish Browns and Associates, at your service, at your side. With offices in Pier, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. Ferding Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Ferding Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Ferding Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Ferding Electric, 224-8684. As we walk you back, it is no score on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Schuffelbein scoreboard. 9-1-2. and two. Dawson gets to lead things off. First pitch will be upstairs for ball one to get us started here in the top of the third inning. So far, just two hits, both being from the Pier Governors. Dawson gets 182 batting average through seven games in total for the Governor shortstop. As the count's now 1-1. One and one. Four for 22, those four hits all being singles, but it had, and still looking for that first RBI, but has scored four runs for the Governors. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a swing and a miss, and it's now 1-2, a touch behind the fastball from Eric Roberts. Again, 9-1-2, George Stalley and Charlie Simpson will hit after Getz. Any of the three reach base, Jez Zay will have a chance to maybe hit with a runner in scoring position. 1-2, fouled back to the netting. We'll do it again here at 1-2. Kate Kaiser getting closer and closer to being back in the lineup, which will help the Governors defensively, offensively, and 
Well, again, since he's shortstop right now, able to move him, whether it be third base or second base, put Kaiser at short, and maybe put him at third. Just adds another glove to this lineup as there's a swing and a miss and a four strikeout now for Roberts to kick things off here in the top of the third inning. And it brings us back to the top of the order. George Staley now to the plates. He flew out on the first pitch to the right fielder in Chase Leary to open up the ball game. And so wait on the first pitch and he'll take it for strike one. I mentioned Staley at 409 coming into the weekend with those four doubles, five RBIs, six runs. Now that leadoff spot, you want high average, high run scoring as that one's grounded foul down the third base line. And the count is now at 0-2 here to Staley. Overall for the Governors, Miles Doyle has got the most runs scored, but it is Staley in seconds. And with those five RBIs, it is second on the team behind Jet Zabel's six runs driven in. Which also means that your guys in 7, 8, 9 are doing the, the job of getting on base for Staley to bring him in. 0-2 pitch, taken on the inside edge for strike three to the chagrin of Staley, but he will strike out and it's back-to-back -back strikeouts, three in a row back to last inning, and there's two down here in the top of the third. And it brings up the DH, Charlie Simpson. He lined out to the second baseman, Knutson, in his first at-bats. Hit the ball well, but on a raising line shot was not necessarily robbed of a base hit, but Knutson made a fine play on it. First pitch will miss for ball one to Simpson. The lefty looking for a clean third inning as there's a swing and a miss, and the count's now one and one. Five strikeouts so far for Eric Roberts. Four for Ridge Linebach through two innings. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That'll bounce in. The count's now 2-1. And, and, and how this week has gone for Brandon Valley, if Roberts can go deep into this game, that really helps them for game number two. They'll, they're off tomorrow and the rest of the weekend. And you play six games in a matter of four days. One, your pitching will start to be thin as it counts 3-1, and one, but Roberts, who threw on Tuesday and had a no decision against O'Gorman through those three innings. For him to be able to come back out and go long into a game, deep into a game, is going to be huge for the Lynx to try and get a doubleheader sweep. That is flown out towards center field, but it is going to be tracked down by Pudwell out in center, and that will retire the side here in the top of the third. Another one, two, three inning for the pitcher and Eric Roberts. Two and a half completes between Pierre and Brandon Valley, and there still is no score. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pierre Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Hey, yo, Speedo's Lawn Care. Hello. Say, my yard's in rough shape. It's got weeds, brown spots, and crabgrass. Yeah, no problem. What shade of green you need? We've got 31 shades of green over here. Even the latest shade of septic tank grass green. Yeah, that one just naturally gives off a glow. Call the professionals at True Green. They know how to get your lawn healthy and keep it healthy. They guarantee it. All technicians are trained and certified. Call True Green, 224-1916. Springtime has arrived. Service and parts department at Buck Motor Company want to remind you to get your vehicle serviced early to avoid any breakdowns and service-related frustrations. Get up to $100 mail-in rebate on a set of four tires, along with four free oil changes, a $400 value. All AC Delco Marine batteries starting at $134.95 and come with an 18-month warranty. Take $15 off the light detail. Spray in bed liners, $635 on long beds and $595 on short beds. See all our specials at www. Beck-Motors.com. It is 789 now here for the Brandon Valley Lynx as we open up the bottom of the third inning. It is no score on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shufflebine scoreboard. Braden Stroh, Braden Knudsen, and Charles Finn will be the first three hitters as Stroh, the DH, will lead things off. He is three for five so far this week, a double and a three runs driven in over the four games against, again, their South Dakota opponents of O'Gorman and Yankton. First pitch, a half swing, but a full swing, and it's strike one to the DH in Braden Stroh. Here's the 0-1 pitch. 
It'll be outside off the glove of Nolan Peterson. The count's now one and one. And that sun will start to set in front of us as we get farther on this evening. Most likely will be more of a factor, maybe even for the, the iPads and uh, to see things more so in game number two than in game number one. Here's a 2-1 pitch. That'll be taken for a strike, and the count's now 2-2. Two and two. A lot of the fans here at Aspen Park, the first National Bank field, are starting to see that sun where they're sitting at. That will miss low, and the count's now 3-2. and two. Here to Braden Stroh, the DH. Four strikeouts through two innings for Ridge Leinbach. Here's the 3-2 pitch. That'll be taken for strike three, make it five strikeouts through two and a third innings. And the second one he's got to make the, the third one he's got looking so far in this game. And three strikeouts in a row with two to end the second. And now it's Brian Knutz in the second baseman. The lefty will dig in against the right-hander Leinbach. First pitch swinging, ground ball to up the middle. Feel it by Dawson Getz. His throw to cross the diamond is in time, and there's two down. And it will bring up the number nine hitter now, and that will be Charles Finn, the left fielder. Finn is just one for one this week. Does have an RBI, run scored as well. Number nine hitter in the order. Swings of the first pitch and swings and miss for strike one. A good start here for Leinbach. Two down, nobody on here in the bottom of the third inning. Still a 0-0 game. The 0-1 pitch. That'll be over for a strike, and the count's now 0-2. And, and Leinbach again looking for a quick third inning. Here's the 0-2. Line shot into right field. That will get down in front of Zabel. And it will be a two-out single for Charles Finn, the first base runner of the ball game for Brandon Valley. As Leinbach was one strike away from three perfect innings. But it will be a two-out single, and it will allow the top of the order and Chase Leary to come to the plate. And so now Leinbach will have to work from the stretch for the first time in the ball game. First pitch. That one is popped up, foul, right side. That'll get out of play. Wouldn't have to kind of go back and look, but I I don't know if the first now 10 hitters that Leinbach has started 1-0. and I think he's got a first pitch strike. I would say at the very least through eight of the 10 guys he's faced. Runner takes off. This will be... Skied out into the outfield. Coming in is George Stalley. He'll call off Zabel. He'll make the catch, and it is the third out here in the bottom of the third. No rounds, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Three completes here at Aspen Park, and there is no score between a Pier and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Internet as their playground, and they're constantly deploying new scams to attempt to take your hard-earned funds. Fraudulent websites have grown by leaps. Consumers and businesses need to check all aspects of a website before making any type of purchase. Questions regarding this scam should be directed to South Dakota Attorney General's Consumer Protection at 800-300-1986. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting, in a word, quality. Call 222-2523. Top of, top of the fourth inning, there is no score between a Pier and Brandon Valley. Eric Roberts will deal with three, four, and five of the Pier Governors. Jed Zabel, Ridge Leinbach, and Nolan Peterson. An old-fashioned pitcher's duel to start this doubleheader right now. Three innings, one hit, or make that two hits for the Governors, and uh, one hit for Brandon Valley. So in total, 
Only four base runners with Miles Doyle drawing a walk, the only walk between these two guys. And both are on the top of their game through the, at least the first nine outs for each. First pitch to Zabel. He'll swing and miss, a pitch she was behind on, and the count's 0-1-1. Zabel is 0 for 1, struck out swinging to finish off the top of the first inning. Part of six up and six down for these two pitchers who are almost one upping each other every time they go back out on the mound. Counts 1 and 1 here to Zabel as that one misses low and away. When you look at the success these two guys are having right now, and a big reason why they're having success is they've been opening up almost every at bat. 0-1 the count. Zabel will check his swing as that pitch came low and inside and it twisted him a little bit, but that bat never crossed the plane or really left the shoulder. So the count's 2-1. and one. He'll ground the, that one or line that one foul over the third base side. The count's now 2-2. Two and two. That came in on the hands trying to go inside out to left field. But the count 2-2. Two and two. Five strikeouts in the ball game for Eric Roberts looking for his six to start this top of the fourth inning. Here's the 2-2 pitch. That comes in and hits him. And Zabel will take first and a few mistake, a few mistakes that has been made. And one of a few for Eric Roberts. Not even really a few, one of just pretty much one. And it brings up Ridge Leinbach with a runner on first. Leinbach is one for one. He's singled to open up the top of the second. Pickoff attempt and Zabel, who did not have a, much of a lead, just fell back on top of the bag. But not a bad move. And as a lefty, too, you sometimes get those guys leaning a little bit, thinking that I don't have a big enough lead, so there's no point to throw over as the first pitch will be outside for ball one. And then when you think that he's not gonna throw over and you take your secondary lead, that pitcher steps over, tries to pick you off. One no pitch, Leinbach behind it and fouls it over to the first base. Coaching box side, Cody Shero does not try to make the play. Coach Jared Fodden is making the, yelling out the numbers of the play and Leinbach making sure he's got the right numbers on. He'll dig back in with a 1-1 count. Nobody on, or nobody out and one on. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That'll be fouled back and the count's now one and two. Here to Ridge Leinbach. Nolan Peterson, Miles Doyle, the next couple hitters. Top of the fourth and a scoreless game. One, two. Leinbach will go down and it's gonna be a line drive that is caught by the second baseman. They will double off Zabel and they're two down quickly here in the top of the fourth inning. Zabel thought that was gonna get over the head of the second baseman, Knudsen, and it was caught and it was an easy step and throw from Braden Knudsen to double off Zabel at first, and there's now two down for Nolan Peterson. That's a tough break for the Governors, who have had their leadoff man to be either thrown out or doubled off the two times they've been able to get the leadoff man on base. Kaiser was caught stealing after Leinbach let off the second, and now Zabel is doubled off after he's hit by a pitch. Peterson will swing and a miss at a pitch that was coming in on him, low and in, and he will swing and miss for strike one. He struck out swinging in his first down bat. Three hits, so make that two hits in the ball game still for the Governors. That is outside, the count's now one and one. Four base runners for the Governors in total, but without anybody reaching base, they'll only have stranded two with nobody scoring. That will Bounce in, the count's now two and one here to Peterson. Not a cloud in the sky here in Brandon. Here's a two-one pitch. This will be fouled out of 
play on the right side. The count's now two and two. And while the temperature will start to drop a little bit tonight, it's still going to be great for April baseball weather. Here's a 2-2 now from Roberts to Peterson. Taken on the outside edge for strike three. And it's an unconventional three up, three down inning for Eric Roberts. Strikeout number six, no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We head to the bottom of the fourth. There is no score between Pier and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. AGE Corporation's Contractors and Crane Service is a proud supporter of Pier Governor Athletics. For almost 60 years, AGE has been building South Dakota. For all your site work, construction, and crane work needs this season, AGE is here to help. Give them a call. AGE Corporation and Crane Service, 223-2732. That's 223-2732. AGE, proud supporters of local sports. At Agtegra, we're leveraging the power of the cooperative to benefit our farmers and ranchers, their families, and local communities. We're creating jobs for your neighbors and putting money back into our communities. We're lending a hand in our rural fire departments, food banks, and 4-H and FFA programs. That's what local is all about. When you do business at Agtegra, you help us make a difference in your community. Agtegra, strong, stable, dependable, and local. It is two, three, and four due up to start the bottom of the fourth inning as the Pier Governor's Brandon Valley Lynx still without a run in the ball game. And in total have only had five base runners, four for the Governors, make that, uh, yeah, four for the Governors and one for Brandon Valley. And no score on the American Family Insurance, Brandon Shuffle by and scoreboard. Again, two, three, and four, Aiden Zerd, Nolan Pudwell and Jackson Adams. Zerg grounded out to the shortstop, Carter Shufflebein in his first at-bats. First pitch will skip in for ball one, one of the rare times that Leinbach will start behind in the count. Here to open up the bottom of the fourth inning. No runs, one, uh, two hits and no errors for the Governors. No runs, one hit, no errors for the Brandon Valley Lynx. That is fouled back to the netting over the right side. The count's now one and one. And this is game one of a doubleheader between Pier and Brandon Valley. Governors will play doubleheaders from here on out. At least scheduled to play doubleheaders from here on out. This will be popped up on the right side. Zabel with a long run, but that will land out of play. Again, in the right field bullpen. And the count is now one ball and two strikes. To the leadoff man here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pier will travel. Won't really travel. They'll stay here in the Sioux Falls area tonight and play against the Jefferson Cavaliers tomorrow. And then we finally get the home opener next week, Friday. One, two pitch on the hands, ground ball. That's gonna get through the left side. Just past Dawson gets into left field for a base hit. And the leadoff man is on board for the first time in the ball game for Brandon Valley. Second hits allowed by Ridge Leibach. And we'll bring up Nolan Pudwell, the center fielder. Pudwell struck out looking to end the bottom of the first inning. He's 0 for 1. And a chance for Brandon Valley to hit with the runner on base in less than two outs for the first time in this game. First pitch. That one will miss low for ball one. And to have somebody on with three, four, and five now due up is in a game in the fourth inning right now in a scoreless game is probably what Coach Jeremy Van Heel would like to draw up if he could. And he's got that... Right now, here's the 1-0 pitch from Leinbach. Runner takes off, taken for a strike. The throw to second, and the tag will not be applied as it just skipped away from Miles Doyle. And the stealing second is Aiden Zur, and he will be in with a 1-1 count. And nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. So a stolen base for Zur. They're a team that likes to run. In the two games yesterday and against O'Gorman, they were teams that were, they were a team that was continuously trying to take the extra base and trying to steal. End up with seven steals, I believe, in game number two against Yankton. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Be taken for a strike, and the count's now 1-2. and two. That was right in 
on the hands, but across the plate. And now Leinbach will be looking for the strikeout pitch of Pudwell. One, two. Take it on the outside edge for a strike, and that will be another strikeout for Leinbach. Let's see, fourth one he's got looking. And 6-1 of the ball game now for Leinbach, and it brings up Jackson Adams. Picture perfect of coming in on the hands for a strike right on the edge on the inside corner, and then you go on the outside edge where it looks like after that first pitch was a strike, you're going, boy, that's way out there in the other batter's box. Well, let's still cross the plate. He changed the look of uh, for Pudwell to not really feel comfortable up there at the plate. That's the first pitch is over for strike one to Jackson Adams. We're mixing your pitches, mixing the locations, and Leinbach hitting his spots has been very beneficial in this game so far as that pitch was maybe a tad low, but still swung on by Adams. He swings and misses, and the count's 0-2. He grounded out to Dawson Getz in his first at-bat. 0-2 counts with one on and one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Leinbach. Comes in and hits Adams. That's a tough one with an 0-2 count. And it brings up now Max Peters, who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. But it does, as we'll have a courtesy runner for Brandon Valley. But it does put back the opportunity for a double play ball. Braden Hieronymus will be the courtesy runner for Adams. When a ground ball can get you out of the inning. First pitch, there's your ground ball. Shuffleby will step on the bag at third. The throw to first is gonna be in time. There is your double play and one pitch to get you out of that inning. A 5-3 double play to retire the side here in the bottom of the fourth inning. No runs, one hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Four completes here at Aspen Park. No score between Pier and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you listen to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Stolken Peterson LLP has been your local CPA firm for over 40 years, offering tax preparation, bookkeeping, payroll, and consulting services. If your business, farm, or ranch needs professional, accurate, and reliable services, we are your firm. Our clients are our number one priority. If you need a higher level of accounting service, give us a call at 605-224-5828. That's Stolken Peterson LLP, 222 East Missouri Avenue in Pier. ComTech, your local technology solutions provider, is now located on the truck bypass. With great brands like Bose, Sonos, LG, Samsung, Lenovo, and so much more. Stop in to see their new showroom for everything in stock for your personal or business needs. ComTech provides professional installation and service after the sale. ComTech is your local technology store located now on the truck bypass. Or visit us on the web at ComTechPlus.com. Miles Doyle, Matthew Burr, Spencer Easlin. It is six, seven, and eight here for the Governors in the top of the fifth inning. As we welcome you back here to Aspen Park in Brandon, no score on the American Family Insurance Brittany Schuffelbein scoreboard. No runs, two hits, and no errors for both sides with two men left on base. We have been as uh, just about as even as you can possibly get that double play, huge one turn, and Schuffelbein who fielded it right in front of the bag Took one step back to put his right foot on the bag and then stepped across to throw it to Brewer for a 5-3 double play. And one that was, looks like it could be relatively routine, but it is a lot harder than it looks. Everyone is flown out towards right field coming in. That will drop in for a base hit in front of the right fielder and Leary and Miles Doyle will lead things off here at the top of the fifth inning. Third hit of the ball game for the Governors, and now it's Matthew Brewer. It'll be the third time the Governors in five innings have got the leadoff man on base. They're looking for the first time in this ball game to not have that leadoff man be retired at any point. I'd love to see him come in to score, but first pitch to Brewer will miss just low for ball one. Both these pitchers with four shutout innings working in now here into the fifth. 
Greer with a ground ball. That one is going to be fielded by the third baseman. Throw to second for one. They're not going to have a shot at first base, so it goes down as a fielder's choice. And again, for the third time here in this ball game, the Governors get the leadoff man on base, but then is retired. This one on a fielder's choice instead of being doubled off or thrown out trying to steal. 5-4 on the fielder's choice, and there's one down, and it brings out Spencer Eastland. He struck out swinging in his first at-bat. So now Brewer is on at first with one away here at the top of the fifth inning. Roberts will come set from the stretch. First pitch will deliver and missing low for ball one. You look at where the governors are at. Only Cooper Twilliger is the lone guy that's not available to throw coming into this game and going into this weekend. Twilliger will be available tomorrow. And that one will be behind the catcher. The throw to second, Brewer with a nice job of reading it. Jackson Adams just couldn't find the handle of it and Brewer was able to see it to take off for second. And he slides in with that throw coming late. And the pass ball will allow Brewer to get into scoring position the first time that the Governors, second time the Governors will have a runner in scoring position. 2-0 pitch from Roberts to Eastland. He'll foul that one back to the netting, and the count's now two and one. Eastland and then gets. As long as one of those two reaches base, George Stally have a chance to hit. Whether it be with the lead or trying to give the Governors the lead and get somebody on the scoreboard here in this ball game. Two one pitch. Easel with a ground ball that is fouled just past Coach Fodness over there at third base. And the count now goes even at two balls and two strikes. Looking for a strikeout again of Easlin is Roberts. Six strikeouts in total through four and a third inning for the lefty Eric Roberts. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. A strikeout. Second time that Eastland has gone down on strikes, and there's now two down. And it will bring up Dawson Getz. So now there's two or there's two outs with a runner at second, and it's up to Dawson Getz to at least extend the inning to George Staley or drive in Brewer. First pitch to Getz. Swings and misses on a curveball, and the count's 0-1-1. Get struck out swinging in his first at bats. Seven strikeouts now for Roberts. Looking to get out of this little bit of a jam again. A little bit of a jam here in the top of the fifth inning. But a base hit would score Brewer most likely. That pitch will miss low, and that's a good block there by Adams. And the count goes to one and one. Dawson gets. One one counts. Roberts will come set for the stretch. Here is the one one pitch. That one is off the end of the bat to feel it by Roberts coming to his left. He will make the play to first and that will retire the side. Here in the top of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Four and a half has gone by here at Aspen Park, and there is no score between Pier and Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul helping you and your community achieve financial success. Bank West, convenient, connected, committed. Member FDIC. Nystrom Electrical Contracting in Pier has been providing professional sales, service, and installation since 1977. Whether you're starting from scratch, new construction, or you're upgrading your current system at your home, farm, or office, give the professionals at Nystrom Electrical Contracting a call. They've got a lot of bright ideas. 
Call Nystrom's today to schedule a free computer-generated estimate. The number is 224-8750. Or visit their website at nystromelectric.com. As we welcome you back, it is the bottom of the fifth inning. No score of the American Family Insurance, Brittany Schuffelbein scoreboard with Emma Thielen back at the station. John Wickler here on this Friday night as the Governors and Brandon Valley Lynx scoreless through four and a half innings, and it will be six, seven, and eight for Brandon Valley. Ryland Carroll, Braden Stroh, and Braden Knudsen. He might reach his base. It'll go to Charles Finn, who has one of the two hits for Brandon Valley. Carroll struck out looking in his first at bat as he'll miss, as he'll take ball one. Linebach will miss outside for first pitch ball. 1 0 from Linebach. Swing and a miss since strike one. Two singles and a hit to batter, and the only three guys have reached base for Brandon Valley. And that pitch will miss low and away. The count's now two and one. The Governors have uh, no runs on three hits, have left three men on base. No runs, two hits, and two men left on base for the Brandon Valley. This will be skied out of play on the right side, and the count goes now two and two. To the leadoff man in the order, on well, leadoff man in the inning, but six man in the batting order, Rylan Carroll, the third baseman. Carroll's inning 182 coming into the day. This will be a chopper on the first base side. Brewer will wait on that, and he'll take it to the bag himself. For the leadoff man retired to kick off the bottom of the fifth. And there it will bring up now the number seven hitter, Braden Stroh, the DH, who struck out looking in his first at bat. For Braden Stroh, again, 600 batting average, three, of, three for five. Now still hitting 500 this week, three of six. Here's the first pitch. That is going to be grounded foul on the first baseline, and the count's 0-1-1. In the, the sun still falling down on the right, in the right field. Most of it really won't cause too many problems other than maybe, and probably won't even cause many problems other than maybe the third baseman throwing it to first. And at this point, it would probably be game two when that really becomes an issue when it gets closer to sunset time. Here's the 0-2 pitch now from Leinbach to Stroh. That one will miss just outside. That's a really good pitch there from Leinbach and a really good take from Stroh because that ball was in the strike zone for a lot of that pitch and Stroh did not chase. 1-2 pitch, that'll bounce in. The count's now 2-2. Two two. That's one where for Stroh who didn't pull the trigger, he, he either you see it really well or you're taking a deep breath that ball just kept falling out of the strike zone. 2-2. Two, two. That one comes high and inside. Oh, no, taken for strike three. Strowan bent down like it was coming at him as he was going to be hitting him. And the way the angle that we have did not look like that was would have been called a strike. But for Stro, he goes down looking in a pitch that comes back in and really buckles Braden Stro. And there's now two down. And Leibach's got five different guys looking in this game. First pitch is over for strike one to Brain Knudsen, who grounded out to the shortstop, gets in his first at bat. He's got at least one guy looking in each of the five innings. This will be off the end of the bat. Gets with a little bit of a leap and like the catch in a one, two, three inning. Once again for Ridge Leinbach, five completes here at Brandon Valley, and it's still 0 0 between Pierre in the links. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping wants to make it easy for you to get that lush green lawn and that yard haven that you've been dreaming of. Visit dakotasprinkler.com to make appointments for sprinkler systems, spring startup, service calls, fall winterization, and landscaping quotes. Trust Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping's professionals to get you through the planning and installation to make your landscaping needs a reality. Visit dakotasprinkler.com today. 
With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back, the sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company has signed its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebind Agency, LLC. 224-6627. It is the top of the sixth inning, and there is no score between Pier and Brandon Valley on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shufflebein scoreboard. And for the governors, they will have the top of the order. George Stalley, Charlie Simpson, and Jed Zabel trying to find a way to break through. Both these teams are trying to find a way to break through. First pitch to Stalley will be upstairs for ball one. Stalley is 0 for 2. Flew out to the right fielder on the very first pitch of the ball game. And then he was caught looking in the top of the third. That 1-0 pitch will miss low, and the count is now at two balls and no strikes. 57 pitches for Ridge Leinbach through five innings. That was 71, 71st pitch for Eric Roberts. He threw 69 in the the first five innings and starting to slowly maybe get some activity in the right field bullpen for Brandon Valley with Roberts now at 72 and this will be pitch number 73 with a 3-0 count to Stalley. That'll be taken for a strike. The count's now 3-1. and one. You are listening to KCCR here a Riverfront Broadcasting Station. It is the top of the six and there is no score here in game one. We just passed six o'clock. 3-1 pitch to George Stalley. That'll be taken for a strike, and the count's now 3-2. Stalley tipped his head back, but we've seen that, that pitch be called a strike throughout this ball game. So the count is full at 3-2. Stalley trying to get on base for the first time and be a leadoff man on base for the Governors. 3-2 pitch from Roberts. Ground ball on the left side. It'll be backhanded and short in the hole. That throw's not going to be in time with the speed of Stalley. It's a leadoff single, infield single for Stalley. And we'll see what now if the Governors can do something with that leadoff man on base. And it'll bring up the DH, Charlie Simpson, who is 0 for 2. That's just the fourth hit of the ball game now for the Governors. No runs, four hits, no errors. Three men left on base through five innings and into the six. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on base for Brandon Valley. Here's the first pitch. Stally is picked off. He's going to run to second. The throw is not in time. Stally will take seconds. He was picked off, but did not hesitate. as that first movement. He spread it towards seconds. And knowing that he had gotten picked, now the now Coach Fondas will come out and talk with the home plate umpire, or make that the home plate umpire, the base umpire. Asking about something maybe, but either way, Stalley is on at second. Goes down as a stolen base for Stalley. That's a huge steal, and the Governors have a, their leadoff man in scoring position with nobody out in the top of the six. And you're going on first movement, knowing that you that throw was coming over. You didn't hesitate and try and get into a pickle. You just try to take off for second and try and beat that throw from the pitcher to first to second. And Stalley was able to do that. And the counts 1 0 here to Charlie Simpson. That'll bring out a mound visit and maybe to buy some time with the reliever warming up out in the right field bullpen. It is a right hander that is getting ready for the Brandon Valley Lynx out in right field. So our first mound visit of the day 0 0, our score here at the top of the six. Ridge Leinbach and Eric Roberts have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in the first five innings of this game. Trying to get the number of who it is. Brayton, uh, Brayton Stroh is the man that is warming up in the bullpen for Brandon Valley right now. And whether that was a stall tactic to get Stroh a little bit more loose out of the right field bullpen or just to try and slow things down for Roberts, who they want him to get through these six innings. We'll 
Let's see if we can get you a score update. Pure Governor Softball was playing against Yankton. Let's see if we get a final score for you. It's their game. They start at four. That one will bounce in, and it was blocked up by Jackson Adams, and the count's now 2-0. Oh. Uh, Yankton beat Pier 12-0 in softball. The Governors will take on O'Gorman tomorrow with a 2 o'clock first pitch. We'll have games at noon and 2. Here's a 2-0 to Charlie Simpson. That will miss low and inside. The count's now 3-0. and Second 3-0 count in this sixth inning. Stally, he was able to battle back was Roberts to make it 3-2. and For an infield single, 3-0 pitch. That is at the top of the zone for a strike. Simpson had tossed the bat, thinking it was going to be ball four. So he's going to get it back from the number three hitter, Jed Zabel, who is waiting on deck. So the count's now three and one. Still good, good hitter scout here for Simpson, who's 0 for two. Lined out of the second baseman, flew out of the center fielder. 3-1 pitch, will miss low, and that is a walk in this first and second now with nobody out. And that brings up Jed Zabel. And are they going to, to go to the bullpen? Looks like there's actually maybe some double barrel action out in right field. It is a lefty-lefty matchup. This could potentially be the last hitter for Roberts with Zabel to the plates. He was hit by a pitch. He's 0 for 1 so far. First pitch, Zabel shows butt, taking it for a strike on the outside edge. Well, I don't think Zabel with the, the head tilt agreed with that first pitch strike. But it is 0-1 to the governor right fielder. Roberts will come set for the stretch. Long pause, the 0-1 pitch. That one's taken right down the middle. That's taken for a strike, and the count's now 0-2. Zabel might have been looking for something off speed. He was not able to pull the trigger on that 0-1 fastball. So now it's 0-2, and Roberts can go anywhere. Try and retire Zabel. 0-2. That'll get off the catcher's glove of Adams and both runners will move up and we've got our first base runner at third base today between both of these teams, second and third with nobody out. And if you are the governors, you have to score right here. And if you're Brandon Valley, the infield will come in. It's a 0-0 game at the top of the six. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Infield has to come in and keep this a 0-0 tie. Governors have to take advantage and score runs. Here's the one, two. Zabel, did he check his swing? He, they will appeal to second, and the base umpire says he did not swing, so the count is now at two and two. A good take there from Zabel. Trying to drive in his team leading eighth and maybe ninth run. With the base hit, he could do it. Two, two. That was taken for strike three. Zabel got to tie it up. Knees buckled and taken for a strike. Second time, he goes down on strikes. And it's now Ridge Leinbach who can't help himself out. He's one for two so far. He's singled back in the top of the second. Lined out to the second baseman, part of a double play. First pitch from Roberts to Leinbach. He'll foul that one off the plate into the backstop. And the count's 0-1-1. This, again, is the spot for the Governors. Got to put the ball in play, at least put the ball in play. Roberts will step off. Stroh continues to get loose out in the right field bullpen. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Leinbach will foul that one away, and now it's 0-2, and, and Roberts who fell behind to the first two hitters who are now standing at second and third. There, He was down 3-0 and in the count on both of those hitters. He's gotten 0-2 in the last two hitters. And a chance to try and get a strike out of Leinbach. 0-2 pitch. Foul, just barely got a piece of it was Leinbach to stay alive. Count remains at 0-2. Nolan Peterson is on deck. He's 0-2 with two strikeouts, but a chance to avenge that and potentially drive in the game's first run. The right side is back, the left side is in. 
0-2 pitch. Leinbach will foul that one away. We'll do it again at 0-2. Third baseman and Carroll, the shortstop and Zur are both in at the edge of the brown part of the infield, which would be the dirt, but with an all-turf infield is where that dirt would normally be at. But the second baseman and Knudsen all back in the, the hole, a hard ground ball. They're going to trade it out for a run on the right side. They're going to try and keep Stally at third if he stays, if he pulls the ball to the left side. 0-2 again. Leinbach down the right field line. Look, that will stay fair, and that will drive in two runs. Leinbach on his way to second. Both runs will come into score. It's a two RBI double for Ridge Leinbach and the Governor's breakthrough in the six. On the double from Ridge Leinbach. Helping himself out, putting himself in square position. That will end the day for Eric Roberts, who nearly got through six scoreless innings. But a two-run double for Ridge Leinbach makes it 2 nothing, And the lefty, Eric Roberts, his day will come to an end. Braden Stroh will come in to pitch. We will step aside for a minute. You listen to Pure Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, lammotor.com. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Todd's Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. So you can't close the book on uh, Braden, uh, of Eric Roberts quite yet as uh, Braden Stroh will come in to pitch as Roberts has given up those two runs on four hits, two walks, and eight strikeouts, but he is responsible for the runner on at second, which is now Kate Kaiser after Ridge Leinbach doubled home the two runs down the right field line as both runs came in to score, both of uh, Staley and Simpson. And the Governors have a 2-0 lead here in the top of the sixth inning. But, but if Stroke can strand that runner on at second, it will be just two runs allowed, but it, it could be a potential of three runs given up by Eric Roberts, who went five in the third inning. And outside of that sixth, I mean, this has been a, what a fantastic ball game between these two teams, but these two pitchers, between Roberts and Leinbach have had themselves a really good duel. And Leinbach helps himself out both on the mound and at the plate right now with a two run double. As Stroh continues his warm up tosses, there is no change in the order in the for batting for Brandon Valley. Stroh was the DH, he just now comes in the ball game. So it is just a straight nine now for Brandon Valley. And he will face Nolan Peterson, Miles Doyle, and Matthew Brewer if one of those two reach base. So Leinbach, who is now back in the dugout, getting himself ready to go in the sixth inning, he will face nine, one, and two in the bottom of the six for Brandon Valley. He is again, thrown just 57 pitches through five innings, so you're in a good spot if you continue to be as efficient as you are to maybe go through that entire ball game. And obviously, you gotta, get, you gotta get through the sixth inning, make sure you get through the sixth inning before you think about trying to go the distance and go all seven. Nolan Peterson steps to the plates. First pitch from Stroh to Peterson. That'll miss low for ball one. And again for Brandon Valley, for Roberts to go five in the third inning really helps maybe ease a little bit of game number two of what you're going to do in that ball game 
as long as, as the runner takes off for third, the throw to third, tagging out is a Kaiser. And he will be thrown out trying to steal third base. And so it's now a 1-5 caught stealing. And now there's nobody on in two outs. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That one is a line shot in the left field for a base hit. Peterson's now one for three. And the inning will continue for Miles Doyle, who's been on base both times. One of the rare guys, the only guy that can say that he's been on base both times he's come to the plate. Linebach's been on base twice, but he's two for three. Doyle one for one with a walk and a single. And that base running mistake hurts the Governors because that could be a 3-0 lead right now. And a game as close as this one, every run could count at the end of it. Doyle swings and misses for strike one. Stroh trying to get out of this inning. 0-1 pitch. That'll miss low. And the count's now 1-1. One one. Back pick to first and no play over at first base. So that does officially close the book on Eric Roberts with Kaiser being picked off between second and third. So he does go five and a third innings, allowing four hits, two runs, two walks, and eight strikeouts. Doyle with a ground ball, third base side, but that is foul. That counts now one and two. And Stroh trying to get out of this inning. One pitch away from getting out of this inning and getting a chance for Brandon Valley to get the bats going in the bottom of the six with nine, one, and two due up. One, two pitch. A long pause delivers and Doyle will swing and miss and strike out. And that will end the top of the six, but not before two runs score on two hits in the inning. The two RBI double make that three hits in the inning, but a two RBI double for Ridge Leinbach. No errors and one man left on base. We head to the bottom of the six. Two nothing lead for Pier over Brandon Valley. Back in a minute, you listen to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your Pier Area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, hey you, are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. 9-1-2 and two here for the Brandon Valley Lynx as we welcome you back to Aspen Park here in Brandon. Charles Finn, Chase Leary, and Aiden Zerr will be the first three hitters. Anybody reaches base, it'll go to Nolan Pudwell with a 2-0 lead on the American Family Insurance. Brittany Shufflebein scoreboard. Ridge Leinbach working now into the sixth inning as he'll deliver the first pitch for ball one to open up this bottom of the six. Charles Finn has one of the two hits for Brandon Valley. One of the three base runners as we are at the end of two times through the order for Brandon Valley. That'll get outside. The count's now 2-0. That was pitch number 59 for Ridge Leinbach. With 105 as your max, you're in a good spot to, uh, if you can get through this sixth inning, in an okay fashion, you have a chance to go for the seventh, and with the the way the day is, how night nice, how warmer it is, that it might lead you to maybe go into the seventh inning. But it will be a four pitch walk to open up the bottom of the sixth inning. That's just the first walk issued. He did hit a man in Jackson Adams, so the only the second free pass issued by Ridge Leinbach. As Chase Leary now will come to the plate. 
0 for 2 so far with the strikeout and a flyout. Here's the first pitch to Leary. Runner takes off. Taking inside for ball one. They throw to second. They got him out in seconds. And a huge throw from uh, Nolan Peterson. Great tag by Dawson Getz and a big first out here at the bottom of the six. So there's nobody on now and one away. There's a check swing, but a full swing, says home plate umpire, and the count's now one and one to Chase Leary. I think it might have been a hit and run. As that one be outside, the count's now two and one. Look over at third base coach and the head coach and Jeremy Van Heel, and he was showing the swing the bats after Finn was thrown out trying to steal second. As that one's fouled back in the count's now two and two. Obviously he took it for a ball, but on a hit and run, you gotta swing no matter where it's at. Just to give the catcher, it, it, that could be a split second difference between the catcher getting that throw off to second, or maybe making that throw not be secure to second as that one will miss inside the count's now three and two. And while that swing didn't come, a strong throw from Peterson to second, the tag applied and there's one down, 3-2 pitch. Ground ball to Shufflebein over a third. He's able to stay with it. The throw to first will be in time. The hard hit ball. Shufflebein had a chance just to knock it down. And his throw across is in time. And there's two down now here in the bottom of the six. And now here is Aiden Zur, who is one for two. Again, one of the three guys that have reached base so far with Finn reaching base both times he's been to the plates. But Zur, one for two, he was Retired in the third inning, make that the fourth inning as there's a swing and a miss for strike one on the 5-3 double play that Max Peters grounded into as he's the only guy to reach second but was retired part of that double play. Counts one and one. Here to Aiden Zer. Flybach trying to get through six complete innings the 2-0 lead right now. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's on the right around the hands, but top of the zone across the plate, and the count's now 1-2. And, and Leinbach will be looking for his eighth strikeout. 1-2 pitch. That one just missing. And again, a really good take there from Zur, who tracked that all the way across the plate and did not take the bait on the pitch just outside the zone. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Six shutout innings for Ridge Leinbach. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. To the seventh we go, the Pier Governors with a 2-0 lead on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shuffle by scoreboard. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Wagner Auto Company is your complete transportation headquarters. Now is the time to order your new Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Plus, a good selection of quality pre-owned and certified pre-owned vehicles. They'll take care of you after the sale with a full-service parts and auto body shop with trained technicians. Along with a friendly financing team that'll work with you to find the best deal and one that'll fit your budget. Wagner Auto is your local full-service family-owned dealership for over 115 years. WagnerAuto.com. That's WagnerAuto.com. Yag Air Incorporated is your locally owned ag chemical and seed retailer. Yag Air Incorporated offers reliable ground and aerial application. For the latest seed and chemical pricing, contact Kyle at 605-280-8710 or Tony at 605-280-4771. Yag Air for all your ag chemical and seed needs. Kyle, 605-280-8710 or Tony, 605-280-4771. As we welcome you back, it is the top of the seventh, and it will be 7-8-9 here for the Pier Governors as Braden Stroh will try and keep this a 2-0 deficit as the Governors lead it on the American Family Insurance Brittany Shufflebein scoreboard. It'll be 3-4-5 and five for Brandon Valley in the bottom of the seventh, whether that is a 2-0 game or more than a two-run advantage for the Governors. We'll see here in this top of the seventh as Matthew Brewer lead things off. He is one for two. He's also been on base twice. He and Miles Doyle as he swings and misses for the first strike. 
Ian Miles Doyle, the only guy that have reached base twice for the first two times through the order. And then you can add on Charles Finn for Brandon Valley, the only three guys between the two teams that have been able to do that, as that pitch will miss low for ball one. Rich Leinbach has also been on base twice with his single and double, the only guy with two hits in the ball game. There's a swing and a miss. Brewers' bottom hand fell off the bat. And he, that swing came through with his right hand still holding on to the bat. Pine tar up the handle as he grips that top of the handle, trying to get a little bit of pine tar to make the hands a little bit sticky. Here's a one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tip in the mitts, and there's a strikeout of Brewer. And one down here in the top of the seventh, and it brings up Spencer Easlin, who is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Maybe Dawson gets then, who is 0 for 2 as well. Here in the top of the seventh inning. First pitch. That'll miss just low, maybe outside for ball one. To Spencer Easlin. The left fielder here in game number one. 1-0 pitch. That'll be upstairs in the counts now. 2-0. And, and outside of a base hit from Aiden Zur, there has been really nobody that is, there's been nothing that has gotten it to Eastland yet in this game. That was a 3-0 count now to Eastland. In on deck is Dawson Getz with then George Stally to follow. 3-0 pitch taking all the way and then will miss for ball four. And it will be a four-pitch walk. One on and one out here in the top of the seventh. And the number nine hitter in Dawson Getz. And now do you do you butt Dawson Getz to get Eastland into scoring position and give George Stalley with two outs a chance to drive him in? Or do you let him swing away and maybe get first and second with one out? Or second and third and give Stalley a chance to drive in two runs? Not bunting, and that first pitch is outside for ball one. Yetsu's 0 for 2, a strikeout, and also ground out back to the pitcher. Pickoff attempt, and diving back in safely is Leeslin over at first. Here's the 1 0. That'll be taken high in the counts, 2-0 here to Eastland. Make that two gets with Eastland on it first. And it'll be three, four, and five in the bottom of the seventh. As that one is over for a strike, the counts now two and one. Pudwell, Adams, and Peters, so hard of the order for Brandon Valley. And for Leinbach, it's, you're not out of the woods yet. And when for the Governors would be great to add on a couple of runs here in the seventh inning. Here's a 2-1 instead of pickoff move and back in safely over at first is Eastland. And the Governors play today, tomorrow, and then at home next Friday against the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Home opener next Friday. That'll be outside. The count's now 3-1. Here to Dawson Getz. There is one man out in the right field bullpen right now, but I do not believe that he is the one he's not throwing, just working with the armbands that probably is not close to warming up. That'll get to the backstop. That'll be ball four, back-to-back -back walks. Eason will get to second quickly, but he'll stay there with the runners now at first and second and one away. And it's George Stalley who singled in the top of the six to lead off the inning. He came around to score on the Ridge Leinbach double. And Stalley's got a chance for his second hit, but would then drive in, most likely drive in a run. With one out here in the top of the seventh. Big spot for the Governors to try and add on to their lead. First pitch, Stalley was stepping out to the left, and it's over on the outside part of the plate for a strike, and counts 0-1. Easlin on at second, gets it first. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Instead, 
A pickoff move and easily back in is Eastland at second base. Not much of a play at all. It's Boston Allard, I believe, that's out there in the right field bullpen. Again, he might be just the game two starter, not so much doing anything to prepare to maybe come into this ball game. Here's the 0 1. That's a curveball that stays upstairs off speed. That's now 1 and 1 to Stally. You have Charlie Simpson on deck. Jet Zabel would follow. Trying to extend the 2 0 lead that wasn't broken into until the sixth inning. That one comes inside. The count's now 2 and 1 here to Stally. And now time is called and we'll have a mound visit. And also with the fact that there, everybody is in the batting order is in the game, there is no DH that if you are going to go to somebody right now, it will be coming from the field and try and get out of this sixth inning. But a 2-1 count and trying to settle down to Braden Stroh. Runners at first and second and one away here in the top of the seventh inning. A two-run double from Ridge Leinbach in the six. He's got six shutout innings as well. The difference maker in this ball game, five shutout innings from Eric Roberts. He went five and a third, giving up four hits, two runs on two walks and eight strikeouts. Leinbach so far has given up no runs on two hits. He is one walk, hit batter, and eight strikeouts in the ball game. Five of those eight being caught looking. But he is well within position to try and go the distance and get a complete game win. As he had just thrown 57 pitches through five innings. And through six innings, he's at 72. So he's got... 32, 33 pitches to work with in the seventh inning to try and get a complete game. 2-1 pitch from Stally, or two Stally is inside, and the count's now three and one. Again, if you can't get anybody out here, and if you have to go to another reliever, it's right now going to be somebody on the field. 3-1 pitch. That'll be taken for ball four, and the bases are now loaded with one out, and it's Charlie Simpson who's got a chance to bust this game open. Three oh walks in the inning. Loads the bases after a strikeout of Brewer. Three walks, bases are loaded. One out here in the top of the seventh. Charlie Simpson, first pitch to him, swings and fouls it away. Counts 0-1. Simpson is 0 for 2, but reached base with a walk and scored in the top of the sixth inning. Stally and Simpson, along with as long as Zabel comes to the plate, for the first time that anybody has been able to hit in back-to-back -back innings. Here's a chopper, high chopper that is fouled just down the third base line. And so the count goes to 0-2. And, and for Stroh, he's got a chance to try and get a huge strikeout. The middle stays back. The end, the corners are in. Ground ball, they'll try and turn it up the middle. At second, if they go to the corners, they'll go home with it. 0-2 pitch. That's upstairs. Trying to get Simpson to chase the fastball up above the zone. Does not bite, and the count's now 1-2. and two. Here's the 1-2. Simpson waits on the delivery. That's a curveball. Bounces in front of the plate. It was blocked by Adams, who then took off to his left, was maybe thinking that the ball was behind him, but it was standing right and sitting right next to the plate, so no chance for Easland to try and break for home. And the count now from 0-2 goes to 2-2. Two two. Base hit really opens things up. Ground ball can still get out of this inning without any damage. 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball back to the mound. The throw to the plate for one. The first, it's a double play to get out of the inning. 
A one, two, three double play ends the top of the seventh. The Governors are unable to score with the bases loaded in two outs. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Ridge Leinbach trying to close it out of the mound with a 2 nothing lead. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pure Governor Baseball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. There's only a split second to decide if the pitch is good or not. With skill, some luck, and a prayer, the bat connects. The ball goes soaring over the fence. The sense of joy and excitement is contagious as we cheer for another pure home run. This is Pastor Sam of Faith Lutheran Church. I want to invite you to join us to experience the joy of worshiping God. We thank him for the home run moments we have in our lives. We hear his comfort and peace when it feels like we've struck out. We're glad to see you at Faith Lutheran Church. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through the extreme seasons we've grown to love. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. Their ASC certified mechanics can make your AC cool again, or even just change your oil. They can look into and fix those noises that seem to come from nowhere and have you stressed out. Bring your car to Graham Tire so they can put your mind at ease. Graham Tire, your tire store next door. Three, four, and five here for the Brandon Valley Lynx as they get a little bit of momentum on a bases loaded double play turn, a one, two, three double play to get them out of the top of the seventh. Now here at the bottom of the seventh, Noah, Noah, Nolan Pudwell, Jackson Adams, and Max Peters, three, four, and five. Anybody reaches base, it'll then be Rylan Carroll. I guess technically they don't need, well, they, they need people to reach base, but they don't technically need a fourth hitter to come to the plates. But Nolan Pudwell will lead things off. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. He's been caught looking both times as he leads off the bottom of the seventh. Ridge Leinbach with 33 pitches to work with here in the seventh inning to try and get a complete game. Will miss for ball one. So maybe a little bit of some tossing out, not quite yet warming up, just but just to make sure, this one off the handle, Dawson Getz will make the catch, and the leadoff man is retired to kick off the bottom of the seventh. Jackson Adams, who is 0 for 1, was hit by a pitch. Back in the bottom of the fourth inning, will come to the plate. And since that double play was turned, who Max Peters has won that had it it's been eight straight retired for including that double play eight straight retired from ridge Leinbach. mostly eight straight retired a walk but then caught stealing of charles finn an unconventional eight straight retired counts 0-1 here to jackson adams 0-1 pitch this will be a long fly to deep left. Spencer Easel will turn and watch this one go. There goes the shutout, but it's still a 2-1 lead as Jackson Adams hits a home run. That is a blue-west field car home run. And it's a 2-1 ball game. A solo shot for Jackson Adams. And this game has gotten, gotten even closer. Just the third hit overall for the Brandon Valley Lynx. And a solo shot over the left field wall for Jackson Adams. 2-1 ball game. But still two outs away. So no shutout for Ridge Leinbach. But he can still go for that complete game. As Max Peters will come to the plate. That first pitch will be missing outside for ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch. This will be popped up. On the infield, who's calling for it? Somebody's got to take charge. Matthew Brewer will make the catch. And the Governors are an out away from finishing out a game one win. So now it's Ryland Carroll that will come to the plates. He's 0 for 2, struck out looking. And also grounded down to the first baseman, Brewer. Two down, nobody on here in the bottom of the seven. 2 1 our score on the American Family Insurance, Brittany Shuffle by and scoreboard. First pitch, hard line drive, base hit. The tying run will get on. Underneath the glove of Eastland and out towards the wall in left field. It'll be a single and an air and a runner on second. The tying run is in scoring position on the first air of the ball game from either side. And Coach Cody Sherrill will make his way out there and talk with Ridge Leinbach, who again is an out away from a complete game. But Braden Stroh, who's 0 for 2 with 
two strikeouts. Has a chance to tie the game up. So still a chance for Brandon Valley. Runner in scoring position and two away. And for Ridge Leinbach, that was pitch number 79. So again, he's still got 26 pitches to work with. To try and get himself through this ball game. It doesn't really matter. You know, at this point, if he feels good, you can go 105 because yes, he's just about to cross the threshold into a four rest day, but being that there are no games and you're, you, other than tomorrow and you're not pitching tomorrow, that he can go 105 pitches and or as long as he needs, but the motion is to really kind of speed things up out in left field. Cannot see who was actually over up. Can only see the hats of someone playing catch. So they have not gone out of the bullpen. I think they will get out of the bullpen. I don't know if that will be J.J. Buckles. It is J.J. Buckles that will work his, or walk his way out to the left field bullpen to try and get loose. Has to get loose pretty quick. So here is a brain stroke with a tying run at second. First pitch is upstairs. That'll get to the backstop as well. And now a base hit does tie the game. Probably is going to tie the game anyway, but now the base hit will tie the game. With a wild pitch that moves the... Tying run 90 feet away. A one out solo shot from Jackson Adams made it a 2-1 game. A single in air got Rylan Carroll to second. A wild pitch now to third. That is over for a strike in the counts now one and one. Here to Braden Stroh. 0 for two with two strikeouts, both looking. Leinbach trying to get the complete game. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ground ball that is fouled on the first baseline and the Governors are a strike away from finishing out the win. Leinbach working from the windup. With a runner on third and two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. The one, two from Leinbach. That one, take it for strike three and that's the ball game. Nine strikeouts for Ridge Leinbach. He goes the distance, allowing just one run a two, one win for the Pier Governors in game number one. Leinbach goes the distance. Governors get the win behind Leinbach, also getting two RBIs. We'll step aside for two minutes, come back and wrap up game number one. You're listening to Pier Governor Baseball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Ah, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Oh, hey, hold the ladder, hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 when a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Form, function, finesse. The all-new 2024 all-wheel drive Ford Escape is now on sale at Capital City Ford for $32,000 with up to $2,250 in rebates. If you're looking for adaptable interiors ready for your daily adventures, whether it's a trip to the grocery store, to a spontaneous road trip, and everywhere in between, Capital City Ford has you covered. Payments are as low as $385 with Ford Credit Flex by program. For more information and details, contact a sales professional at Capital City Ford. Check out their full vehicle lineup at CapitalCityFord.com. Capital City Ford in Pier. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. As we welcome you back here, it is a 2-1 win for the Pier Governors in game number one. Ridge Leinbach, he goes the distance on the mound. He gets the two-run RBI double. 
He, he's without a doubt a player of the game for the Governors with Leibach going all seven innings. He go, gives up one run on four hits, no errors, three men left on base. That was the line score for Brandon Valley. As uh, the time of the ball game, we want to tell you that here real quick was uh, one hour and uh, uh, will be 46 minutes or 44 minutes, excuse me. An hour and 44 minutes of a 2-1 score for the Governors uh, picking up a 2-1 win. But gave up four hits, one walk. He did hit a man, but had nine strikeouts, including a strikeout of Braden Stroh, who got the hat trick. All three strikeouts were caught, caught looking. Six of his nine strikeouts were looking. That tells you that Ridge Leinbach was on his game, spinning the, the ball well, throwing strikes, and, and and frustrating the hitters of Brandon Valley by getting those nine strikeouts and six of them without even them swinging the bats uh, in game number one. Pier Governors with two runs on six hits, one error. They left six men on base in that uh, sixth inning when they scored the two runs. They had three hits, and the two-run double from Ridge Leinbach got them the two runs. They had one man left on base in that inning, but Leinbach was, was good throughout, both at the plates, going two for three, and then also going all seven innings. As it was the other hits, George Stalley went uh, one for three, Nolan Peterson went one for three. Miles Doyle one for two. Matthew Brewer went one for three for the Governors, who are now six and two on the season. And we're looking for a doubleheader sweep of the Brandon Valley Lynx coming up here in game number two, which will get started here shortly, somewhere around maybe just a little after seven o'clock for game two here this evening. But a big win for the Governors in game number one. Ridge Leinbach will get the win at the plate and on the mound. For the Governors, who are now 6-2, and two, Brandon Valley at 7-8, trying to get back to 500 uh, with a win, trying to earn the splits against the Pier Governors. So uh, we will send things back to the station here for a, for a little bit. Uh, we'll have the second game coming up here in just a little while. Uh, we will end the live video on uh, YouTube, and then we'll come back with Game 2 uh, live video here in just a little bit. So we'll send things back to the station back in three minutes here on KCCR.